Good morning. I'm Larry Kirkpatrick, and I'm inviting you to spend the next seven days with me as we look at this topic, what is prayer? We call it neology, K-N-E-E-O-L-O-G-Y. What is it about? Is it, an, is it a necessity? Uh, look at some examples of it, and then finally look at the tamale prayer. So, interesting things coming up here. Uh, in 1 Samuel 7, verse 5, we see one of the things we can learn about prayer. Here's what it says here. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. Here the word, the underlying word for prayer means to intervene. And that's one of the underlying key meanings of prayer. Prayer is your invitation for God to intervene in your life. He can intervene anyway, but he invites us to invite him to intervene. Some people think that Christians are being silly. They're, we're praying to some invisible friend in the sky. We're just kind of making this up to give us some kind of strange emotional comfort. But be careful with things you can't see. There's a lot of things in the world you can't see or understand. Uh, there are different colors of the spectrum, colors that a bee can see but that your human eye cannot see. There are sounds, you know, that a dog can hear that you, with your human hearing, doesn't fit into the human hearing range, but it's still a sound. You might... Uh, look at an electric fence and wonder if it's energized or not. Say, well, I don't think there's any current running in there. But yeah, you touch it and you might get a 5,000 volt surprise if you touch the right fence, the wrong fence. There's air. Can't see it. Without it, though, we would be in pretty rough state. We need air to breathe. When you throw the light switch on the wall, you expect the light to come on. You don't really understand how electricity works. We have a very limited understanding of how electricity works. We expect the light to come on when we push the uh, button there. So don't be too hung up on things you can't see and uh, believing that you've seen it all. Now there's a supernatural world and praying to the God of heaven, a personal God, is a very important piece of life for humans. Um, as we're looking at this, uh, we want to recognize that God is inviting us to intimacy when we pray. Uh, a lot of times we don't really know what we think until we put our thoughts into words or uh, we write them or speak them. And when we pray, we're putting our thoughts into words. And so that's a good thing. That's a good thing for our heart as we are communicating with God. God tells us what his thoughts are toward us. His he says his thoughts toward Israel, Jeremiah 29, 11, are to give Israel a future and a hope. And he has positive, uh, positive thoughts and so we should uh, trust him and try out some praying, pray to God. So some thoughts about prayer. Prayer is the opening of your heart to God as though he was a friend. I want to tell you, he is a friend who would be closer than a brother, closer than a spouse, closer than a parent or a child. But you have to let him. And he wants to. Let's pray to him right now. Dear Father in heaven, Help us to approach you in prayer. We might not know how to do it. Some of us have never learned this from the previous generation. We're just kind of left dangling in the wind, but Lord, you will help us. Show us how to pray as we look into the Bible and as we look at some of the principles we'll look at in this miniature course just these next six, seven days. Thank you for hearing our prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. God be with you. I give you a special day. You are not alone, and he wants to be on your side. Why don't you invite him to be on your side today?